Hello everyone and welcome back to Destiny. Hopefully many of you are neck deep into the new expansion and are just enjoying everything there is. Of course, there is going to be a lot of criticisms to be had, but it's Destiny that is that Destiny life. In this expansion though, we do have a lot of really amazing core quality of life changes that I think kind of take this game to the next level. A lot of it might seem like oversimplification for now, but I think there's a lot of room for this system to grow. And in this video, we're going to go over a lot of those major changes to the character menu screen. We're going to go over the journey tab, the mod customization screen, and what I think is the best new feature in the game, hands down, loadouts. So without further ado, let's get into it. Right. Well, hopefully you've had a chance to jump into the game and at least maybe try the new mission or try out some of the new changes. The first thing you may have noticed is the completely revamped character menu screen. I think it looks a lot cleaner. If you press left on the D-pad, you get access to the new loadout system. And if you press right on the D-pad, you can get to the new mod customization screen. We're going to go over all of that in just a moment. We are also going to go over the new revamped journey tab, which contains the new guardian ring system and the titles and triumphs and commendations and then we've got the new collections tab as well that has just been cleaned up a little bit we've got more items in the recently discovered section we've got smaller records and then smaller badges just to kind of accommodate everything a little bit better but we're going to go ahead and start things off by taking a look at the new loadout system this is probably my favorite new feature of the game it has been a huge help switching between different subclasses. I've sort of almost imported all of my different builds from Destiny Item Manager and sort of been saving them here in the loadout section. If you are a rank six veteran, then you have access to six slots and you can unlock up to 10 by progressing through the rank system. It took me a little bit to figure out, but once you are hovering over one of your loadouts, you can use the D-pad to change the different things. So if you press left on the D-pad, you go between the different elements. If you press right, you go between the different labels. And if you press up, you go between the different color options. Down doesn't do anything. Maybe they'll add something else in the future. But the idea here is once you have all of the items that you want to save into a loadout equipped, that includes all of your weapons, armor, and mods, and even shaders to the different armor pieces, so here you can see I can just really quickly switch between my strand build and my solar build and I've got all of the weapons, I've got all of the armor, all of the mods slotted and I'm just ready to go. Huge time saver and it really does promote optimizing your build for different activities because I don't know about you but one thing that has slowed me down from build crafting is just how slow it can be to switch between things between the different activities so a lot of times I'll jump into PvP without really optimizing my gear and a lot of the times you'll be switching around armor pieces and one of your stats will just be wildly off and you won't know what's going on. This takes all of that guesswork out of the picture. Another change is to the presentation or the layout of the subclasses. Here, I'm just gonna show you a couple of the new fragments for solar that have those fire sprites. The fire sprites have been a pretty amazing addition to the hunter kit and it's really easy to make them proc. I'm gonna have a separate video pretty soon going over how kind of insanely easy it is to create fire sprites and how useful they can be in your builds. So definitely look forward to that coming out pretty soon. And here, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of overwrite it as another version of this build because I wanna play around with fire sprites, but I wanna maintain my other build. And this might actually get me off of Caliban's hand and be okay with using some other exotics with my hunter. So this kind of promotes exploration and optimization. Again, a huge fan of it. And the preview here, you can get a good look at what's in the loadout. I think there's a missed opportunity with putting the champion icons here to let you know what in this build has champion affinities. But of course, that's really easy to reference now once you put the loadout on and you can reference them right here on the character menu screen. Here you can see barrier. It shows you that it's sort of partial lit and you'll see the difference here in a minute but the thing I like here is that it references every elemental sort of verb or buff or debuff that can contribute to those elemental properties so here you can see I switched to a pulse rifle and now you can see the anti-barrier icon is a lot brighter compared to the overload icon because while I do have the capacity to do overload I don't have anything currently equipped 
But if I go ahead and switch over to something like my stasis build that has a bow, all of a sudden the roles are reversed. We've got the dim barrier and the bright overload, letting me know that I've got my overload bow ready to go for whatever activity that needs it. Super handy to reference. Now let's take a look at the right side of the character menu screen. First off, you'll notice the currencies are completely gone. I'm a huge fan of that. They were just kind of floaty and junky. They of course are in the inventory menu like they always were. But the most noticeable thing is of course going to be the new guardian rank system right here. As you hover over it, you can get a good idea of what your rank is. If you've been playing Destiny for a long time, then you are most likely going to start with veteran and that is what I'll unlocks those six, at least the first six loadout slots. Once you rank up to 10, I imagine you'll get the rest. But the new Guardian rank system is sort of like a guided triumph system that teaches you how to play the game or in the case of 7 through 11, kind of shows how exemplary you are at the game, how much time you're putting in the game, how much you're helping your fellow guardians. Those are going to define the 7 through 11 for the most part. And so this is really designed to have you always be at that baseline of veteran. And then every season you have to work back up to prove that you're still playing the game, that you still understand what is relevant inside the game and that you can be that resource of knowledge for any other players because that's sort of the whole point. If you don't play for a few seasons, you can't expect to be you know, the highest rank and know what's going on in the game without actually playing the game and, and seeing it for yourself. So going back to rank six kind of makes sense because you're always going to be a veteran at the very least. Then below your guardian rank, we have the usual stats. They are just a little bit more compressed, but easy to look at nonetheless. Moving on to the mod customization screen. This might very much look like the appearance editor screen, and if it does, then congratulations. You already know how to use this menu. And of course, it pairs really, really well with the new loadout system. You can quickly swap to your loadout, head on over to the mod customization screen, double check all of your mods and all of your champions and your, and your artifact unlocks and you can just jump right into the gameplay without having to jump between a million different screens. Now, an interesting thing that I noticed here is that it shows you the artifact perks that you've unlocked that are relevant to this build. I was personally hoping that it would let you sort of have different perk selections for different builds and save them so that it would kind of reset the artifact for you, but that's probably coming later on down the line. That would be really cool to have. Now, moving on from the artifact, we have the weapons tab in the mod customization screen. You can select any one of these weapons and change your perk selections, or at the very least, you can just double check your perks and make sure they are synergizing together for your build. And while we're here, we can very quickly go over the new armor charge system. As you can see, all of the combat style mods have been removed from the game. Instead, we have three normal slot mods and all of the mods have been sort of simplified and moved into a single pool with no elemental affinities whatsoever and you'll notice none of your armor also has elemental affinities any longer so you'll notice all of the mods now here available at significantly reduced costs as well which is nice there's also a new concept for harmonic items here you'll see for instance harmonic dexterity this gives you a speed boost or you know a better loader for whatever that is matching your subclass element and that saves you some energy which is nice kind of gives you that incentive to build into a single element so the green mods buff the system itself the blue ones will sort of work always while you have the armor charge active and then the yellow ones will only trigger once a certain condition is met and then it'll consume all of the stacks of armor charge that you have and if you're not familiar yet all you need to do to get armor charge is to pick up an orb of power one that you generate or that is generated by an ally and all you need to do to activate the system is to slot one of these mods and then you've got the armor charge system ready to go all right so moving on from mod customization let's take a look at the new journey tab now, this has a few new additions, some of the new additions in the game, including the Guardian Rank system, the Commendations. Here you can see your Guardian Rank, and if you click into it, you can get all of the sort of achievements that you need to get to get to the next rank. Here on the bottom, it has a sort of auto tracker that really takes any guesswork out of it. Essentially, it's sort of like, just do these three things, and I assume they will 
auto update with new objectives once you complete them and the idea is once you finish all of these sort of recommended auto tracking triumphs then you will have reached the next rank without having to really figure anything out for yourself so that's kind of nice uh, and across from it we've got the regular tracking system now upgraded to six and you can get a very good uh, idea of everything you're tracking everything's going to show up here and of course in addition to the nav mode in normal gameplay but here you can see i'm just going through and i'm tracking a few more things from different sources we can go into the new you know the new title screen looks very nice we can go ahead and just kind of randomly grab one or two let's do something a little different than queen's guard let's go into lightfall itself and say maybe i'm tracking this triumph and i want to go into let's say crucible and i want to work on you know watch them fall and you're going to be able to track all of these right here on the bottom of the new journey tab and we can take a look at this in game by pulling out your ghost and activating nav mode here we can see we start with those tracked guardian ranks sort of auto tracking triumphs that it's recommending move down to the actual content that you are tracking yourself it shows three on one screen and up to three on the next screen i imagine and then we've got the usual sort of quest and seasonal trackers. And then of course, at the very bottom, you've got your different bounties that you can track. And very quickly, I wanna go over the overcharge and surge system since it sort of ties into some of these big changes. Here you will notice the new icons for the new modifiers. We have overcharged weapons. This tells you that every weapon that is in that first column that you've activated in your artifact is available as an overcharged weapon. Next up, we have the surges. We have solar and strand in this case, and that means that any damage source, whether it is an ability or a weapon, will be doing 25% more damage if it is solar or strand. And then in this case, we've also got an overcharged sniper rifle dedicated for this nightfall. And so that kind of opens up a large majority of weapon options. Here you can see I can just go ahead and quickly switch between some different elements. And then here is an example of a loadout that is completely overcharged and surged. Everything that I'm wearing is going to be doing 25% more damage in this nightfall. And of course, I don't have the right champion modifiers, but for the purposes of overload and surge, you can see you've got a lot of options open. So nothing to really worry about as far as restricting your loadout. And it's not so bad to have to sort of change the way we think about this game. Again, a lot of these are big changes, dare I say, Destiny 3 level changes to the core structures of the game. So it's going to take some time to get used to. Anyways, let me know what your favorite part of this new expansion is down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.